What is a cult film? I was on Wikipedia, the source of all information, doing some light reading, when I decided to look up cult films. And of course, Wikipedia had a linking to a list compiled of sources across the internet of cult films. When looking through the list, starting with the A's, Avatar was listed. Avatar, a, a box office monster with a huge fan base and numerous positive reviews, something that you will not get from me about that movie. But I was shocked to see that it was listed alongside other non-cult films like Back to the Future, Batman, Star Wars, Star Trek, Wrath of Khan. These movies, to me, have always been too big and too beloved to be well-known to be considered cult films. Well, maybe not. Wikipedia gives us a definition of what they consider to be a cult film. According to them, a cult film or cult movie is a film that has acquired a cult following. Jackass. Well, thank you, Wikipedia, uh, for that insightful definition. Any more to add? Oh, there is. Cult films are known for their dedication, passionate fan base, which forms an elaborate subculture, members of which engage in repeated viewings, dialogue, quoting, and audience participation. Inclusive definitions allow for major studio productions, especially box office bombs, while exclusive definitions focus more on obscure, transgressive films shunned by the mainstream. The difficulty in defining the term and subjectivity of what qualifies as a cult film mirrors classification disputes about art. The term cult film itself was first used in the 1970s to describe the culture that surrounded underground films and midnight movies. Well, first off, Wikipedia immediately wants you to think about Rocky Horror Picture Show when thinking about cult films, which I would agree if this was about 40 years ago, uh, Rocky Horror is definitely not a cult film anymore, or at least to me, it isn't, because of my own definition for what a cult film is. But according to Wikipedia, everything can be or is a cult film, because we can be as inclusive as we like, meaning that I stuff some cotton balls into my face and pretend to be Vito Corleone. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Then The Godfather becomes a cult classic. No, well... It's on the list of cult films, and that's where I have to draw the line, because not everything can be a cult classic, especially not highly watched, praised, and loved franchises or films with millions of viewers. That's just the mainstream. But if you read further into Wikipedia and other sites that offer their definition, this is a bigoted view. Marvel and DC are just as much of a cult film as my personal choice of Monkey Ball. Not listed among Wikipedia's cult films, or Sweet Smell of Success, or 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T, that even Avatar 1 and 2 are not just some of the highest grossing films in the world, but should be revered as cult classics that every household should have on their shelves. But that means it's not a cult. It's mainstream. The reason people use the word cult, it's because cults are usually small, unknown, obscure, underground, hated, odd, you know, etc., etc. Basically, a lot of negatives. Avatar is like Christianity or Coca-Cola. Everyone's heard of it. You either like it, hate it, or you just don't care for it. The number of people who haven't heard of Avatar are remote tribes in the Amazons or pygmies in Africa or the Amish communities in Pennsylvania that even then I would bet you find one guy who speaks Navi. So I came up with a simple way to identify and categorize cult films, or at least the people who watch them. You got Generation 1, Generation 2, Generation 3, and Generation 4. Simple, right? So what does each generation actually stand for? Well, Generation 1 are your old school guys and gals. Their definition of cult movies are small, very exclusive, generally not viewed by the public. They're your underground films, your midnight movies, your small film festivals. They love the stinkers and the gems that are sometimes outright banned for their grotesque use of violence, or never got a Hollywood distributor, or sometimes foreign and don't even have English translations, or vice versa. They're just indie movies. No, not that indie. Most of the movies don't have Wikipedia pages or fan meetups. They're artistic movies that are just ignored by Hollywood and film festivals, and mostly their distribution is a couple of burned discs that they hand out to friendly theaters. Generation 2, which I would say I'm very a part of, is your box office bombers. 
or with like a Venn diagram, we like horribly disliked and bad reviews or, or just small non-existent movies, which is where we overlap with Generation 1. If someone knows the movie, you're shocked and ecstatic to talk about it. But 9 out of 10 times, they don't. In Generation 1, it's like 1 out of 100, if not bigger. Another big trait of Generation 2 is how we like to dig through catalogs of movies trying to find hidden gems. Movies lost to time. Or as I said before, box office bombs. But Generation 2 is where you find most, I would assume, your cult film followers. Generation 3 are your mainstreamers. Your fandoms. These guys and gals don't have a lot in common with Generation 1 or with Generation 2. But we're using a Venn diagram. Surely they have similarities that would bond us together. Nope, not a... I'm, I'm kidding, of course. The thing that they have in common with Gen 1 and 2 is they're hipsters. They will take a small band film or a box office bomb and amplify it at a cult hood. They build a, a movie TV show into a massive community with cosplay. Comic Cons, calls for revivals, and if there is a unique language, they'll learn the language for sheer fun. Examples include like Star Trek's Cleon, Middle Earth's Elvish, Star Wars' Hut Ease, and Avatar's Navi. But Gen 3 are the least like cult film goers, but at the same time, they're the most like cult followers, investing time and money into love and passion for one particular movie, franchise, or genre. And the final generation, or Generation 4, are your B-movie goers. They love campy, bad acting, bad stories, just bad movies. They build a cult following around watching horrible movies that are so bad, they're good. A fine example of this kind of cult would be like The Best of the Worst by Red Letter Media. Uh, love those guys. But what happens a lot of times is that people make a movie, try really hard, and make a schlock instead. Then after people tell them how much they love their junk, the filmmakers make more, thus leading to this massive B-movie following. Most of the time, it circles around particular actors or directors. And that's your four major groups. Most people who are obsessed with films, TV shows, and whatnot will fall into one of those four categories. So, based on that, I can't really recommend any movies as cult classics because, honestly... I don't know if some of my favorite movies would be cult classics because I don't know if there is a fan base or there isn't a fan base for one. Also, as I assume in most of these cult classifications, there's also just a large market of forgotten movies over the course of time. Uh, Generation 1 are people who love movies and love underground movies and films with naughty plot lines and profanity and, and grotesque amounts of blood. But Generation 2... You know, we just don't know if this movie is well known, or has it truly been forgotten by time. The first time I saw Clowns from Outer Space, it was a cult film. No one had seen it, it was off the walls, wasn't especially beloved, except by a few who had. But then mainstream hit, and now we have 10 million reviews on YouTube and a video game in progress. Another example, um, so before Hocus Pocus 2 came out, I would have assumed that the original Hocus Pocus was lost to time and that millennials knew about it and loved the original Hocus Pocus, but the film itself was not remembered outside of that particular generation and was disappearing from consciousness. The same with like Beetlejuice. What about Mars Attacks? In 30 years, could those movies be cult classics or will they be mainstream again? We, we just don't know. So Generation 2 are just people who love a good movie that no one remembers or hasn't thought about for a very long time. Another example that I would love for you to think about, and possibly answer below if you want, is what about Casper? And I know I'm talking about family spook movies, but you know they're the first ones that come to me. But do you remember the last time you saw Casper? Or thought about it? Or have you never heard of it? But as a member of Generation 2, most of the movies that I love and consider to be cult films are movies that have just been lost to time, forgotten by many people, or were so loathed when they came out that no one from that particular generation cares. Uh, I love 80s, 90s action movies. And there's so many that most people have just forgotten, and sometimes not even because people hate them, but just because there were just so many. We've all heard of Predator and Aliens and Empire Strikes Back, Lethal Weapon, Die Hard, and so on and so on. 
But what about The Running Man? On your mark! I'll be back. Go! It's a great film that was just overshadowed by Predator. They were released the same year. With the same lead actor. Or comparing Conan the Barbarian to Beastmaster. Conan had years of books and comics built around him and is still persevering to today. The Beastmaster, on the other hand, was generally loathed, uh, or at least from my point of view, I, I, I didn't care for it, but was kept alive by viewings on TV and smaller theaters, showing rewatches. It became a cult movie. Uh, but when you think about Conan and Beastmaster today, many people don't know about Beastmaster unless they're big film watchers. And it's slowly starting to disappear from consciousness again. Thus, I would consider it still to be a cult movie. But during a period of time, I would have said that it was becoming more and more mainstream because it was being so wildly available to people. To use a bigger name when talking about cult films, uh, Batman. Is 1989's Batman a cult film? Well, in the definition of what is a cult, no. In definition of fandom cults, yes. But cult films should be smaller, more forgotten, not to be considered one of the best performances of Batman with calls of Keaton to return to the cow. If you told me that your favorite Batman movie was Batman and Robin with George Clooney or even Batman 1966 with Adam West, well, first I would be shocked and wonder if you need to get your head checked. But if you can find another person or a group of friends who enjoy watching schlock together, making fun of movies and quoting lines back and forth, then those two movies I would definitely consider to be cult films. But according to Wikipedia, they're not, which is where I have a big disconnect with what many people consider to be cult films. But I'll list three films that I don't think anyone talks about, that I personally label as cult classics, and highly recommend a watch, possibly with many people so you can, you know, trash the movie together and laugh at it. Uh, Monkey Bone, uh, a movie that I personally love and have seen many times, uh, it's not great, but I wouldn't say horrible. And I love anything that tries to break the mold and tries to attempt a Tim Burton-esque film. Also, I personally believe it was one of the first films that began to crack and break Brendan Fraser's career, which eventually blackballed him in Hollywood and for like a decade and a half. The second movie, Planet of the Dinosaurs. It's a horrible B-movie, but enjoyable to watch. Uh, it came out the same year as Star Wars and will make you believe it's 30 years older with their special effects. And finally, Star Kid, uh, a movie that I greatly enjoyed when I was younger and I haven't seen it in ages, as I would assume many people haven't. It was made in 1997. Its greatest boast that the film makes in the trailer is that Joseph Mazzalo from Jurassic Park is in it. Starring Jurassic Park's Joseph Mazzello, Star Kid. So for older people, it might make uh, the member berries feel good, while younger generations look on in awe that we were ever entertained by such schlock. So there you go. Three films that I would consider to be cult films that also are not on Wikipedia's listing of cult films. But I think I answered the question within my best capacity. What is a cult film? Whatever you want it to be. Because apparently, as long as there's three guys saying lines back and forth, it's a cult film. And outside of that, you guys have a good one. Bye. Let's get out of here.